Plagiarism, where you take someone else's work or ideas and pass them off as your own. A word which used to inspire fear in me, but now, thankfully, I have learned the difference between imitation and inspiration. One, you actually steal someone's work or ideas, and the other, you pay tribute to them. You may be wondering, why is she talking about plagiarism? Well, I will tell you, because a few months ago, or weeks, or a year, I'm not sure which time is weird. Some time ago, I saw a video by Rachel Maxey, where she made terrarium sleeves, which I thought was just brilliant. And I wished to do my own rendition of these sleeves. However, I was unable to. So I put that idea to bed, so to speak. But recently she came out with another video where she made jack-o'-lantern sleeves. And the itch was born anew for me to make my own version of such sleeves. How is this not plagiarism, you ask? Well, I'm going to be drawing inspiration from and paying tribute to her idea and work. I'm not going to be copying it. She did mention at the end of the video that she hoped someone else would make this same item. So I feel like I have permission. Also, she did say that she hopes they will correct her mistakes. No correcting of mistakes here. Everything was absolutely perfect and any mistakes we make in projects simply help us to learn. Mistakes are the spice of life. That's not right. Variety. Variety is the spice of life. How did I get there? Okay, I think I was thinking of the quote by Albert Einstein when he said, anyone who has never made mistakes has never tried anything new. And trying things new is adding variety and variety is the spice of life. So therefore mistakes, variety, spice of life. Okay, we got there. That makes sense up here. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else, but um, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And I'm going to throw in an extra challenge in there because I do not want to leave the house because I have a limited supply of time and money. I'm not going to go anywhere. I am not going to purchase anything for this project. I have to use what I have and make it work. Okay, so I've discovered that I have no more than three quarter yard of orange fabric. I don't know. I think I might have to do my nails before I continue. Anyway, okay. this is it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do an entirely different color, which is fine because I actually prefer the white pumpkins to the orange ones and I have some white fabric, which is actually not fabric. It is my old duvet cover, which is stained and um, just not, not nice anymore. And I didn't wanna throw it out because the fabric is actually very good quality and I thought I could use it as lining or something. So I'm gonna use it for this project. And if it doesn't work out, then I won't feel so bad. I do not know if genius has struck or not. A thought just entered my brain. A white pumpkin, huh? And I'm envisioning what kind of jack-o'-lantern to do on it. And do you know what I'm thinking? Maybe you don't know what I'm thinking. I'll show you. Jack the Pumpkin King jack-o'-lantern sleeves. Yes, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm kind of excited to find out. The first thing to do is to figure out what the sleeves shall be attached to. I'm thinking a dress and I'm thinking I want it to look a little bit like this. And to draft the pattern, I'm going to be using this, which is a sheet that I purchased from the thrift store for $3 and I've already used it for three projects. So that's pretty good.
For some help in figuring out the sleeves, I used the pattern I drafted in this video. I made the top sleeve a lot bigger and then the bottom sleeve I made a lot smaller. For the skirt, I kept it pretty basic. I cut out two rectangles and sewed them together and then I cut out two strips of fabric to make a waistband and a facing. I threw some pleats in there, fitted into the waistband and added a zipper. skirt is finished except for the hem. I'm going to hang this up for a while, probably do the hem last of all. And now I'm going to work on sewing the pieces of the bodice together. But before I did that, I remembered that I had found this little doohickey on the clearance aisle and wanted to try it out to see if I could add some variety to my shots because, well, you know about variety. And I think it worked pretty well. My favorite thing about it is the light that comes on it gave me some extra lighting because it is so dim right there. So I think it worked pretty well. I have been working on this project for two days straight now, at plus one day where I worked on it for a few hours, so I am getting a little bit tired. But my weekend is nearing a close, so I do have to finish this. But it's really nice outside and I really want to go spend some time out there. However, I did just shower, so my hair is wet, and if there is anything we have learned from reading Jane Austen novels, it is that you never go outside when your hair is damp, or you may catch cold and become gravely ill. Although if we're going off the films as well, then it's possible that you may collapse and then a heroic gentleman will come rescue you and later marry you. All the more reason to stay inside. Eyelet time. The eyelets went well, considering I had never used this particular tool before, I am used to a different one, and I only messed up on one eyelet. But I'm not going to dwell on that. Finally getting to the sleeves. I am excited, mostly nervous, to do the sleeves. I want to put interfacing on the sleeves, but I only have this much. Not even enough for one sleeve. So I'm just going to have to do it in the general vicinity of where the face is going to be, or where the two faces are going to be. So I have to split this in half and distribute it among two sleeves. So the further I got into this project, the more I was thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done this, I'm going to have wasted all this time, it's going to turn out terrible. And it was at this moment that I caught my breath and was like, okay, it's actually working, I think it's going to turn out okay. To secure the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, I wanted to use a buttonhole stitch. Sadly, my machine would not allow me to use that feature in that manner. So instead, I used the zigzag stitch and then diminished the width and the length and it basically became a buttonhole stitch and I think it turned out decent. For the sleeves, I just put that little sleeve inside of the big sleeve and then added elastic to the top and the bottom. Sounds very simple, but it wasn't. It was very difficult and I was getting frustrated, so I did not film it. I do apologize. Then I selected which color of lacing to use for the corset and I went with black because, you know, contrast. So one of the last things I have to figure out 
um, is the lighting in the sleeves and I have these and I do not know if that's gonna work but that's all I have so I'm gonna try to make it work it's finished it's finally finished I am so glad to have finished it I am so tired my space is a disaster. I'm a disaster, but that's okay because it's finished. I'm going to wait until it gets a little bit darker outside to film the reveal so the lights will really show up. So until then, I'm going to clean up, but I'm not going to show you the disaster because it's embarrassing. So I will see you for the reveal. Never mind. I completely forgot. I can't go to the bowl looking like this. And by that, I mean, I completely forgot I wanted to do hair and makeup, and I don't know how to do hair and makeup, so it's going to take some time. So I better get started.